Hey, Coach, I'm so excited that you found us on YouTube. Um, I've been coaching for 30 years, put a lot of videos up there for you to use. I hope you're enjoying them. Let me know how I can help you in this great journey. Um, Coach, this guy, he's pretty good. I think he's playing for the Bucks this year. But let me help you. You know, I've been through it. I've won a lot of championships. You can see behind, run, run one of the best high school programs in the country. I can help. I've been there. I've coached my son's team, the youth teams. Let me help you through this great journey. Teachhoops.com is the answer. One-on-one -on -one calls, office hours, resources, you name it. We got it. We can help you. I have been there. Um, so let me help you through this journey. So go over and check it out. Enjoy the video. I tried to ask, and one of them was like, uh, what are some like good warm-up drills to do with like a B – I coach a B-squad team, high school, okay. high school B-squad. Yep. Just like I want to get like a routine to like teach them – like some habits of how to score and also like just to practice our defensive habits. Okay. And I've tried doing like one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. So far I do that quite a bit right at the beginning. We do a little bit of finishing school. We practice a couple moves and then do one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Just wondering what are some habits. What, what don't, have. what don't you like about those drills? Uh, it's just, I, I like the finishing school a lot. Okay. Uh, we're doing a little bit because, well, my guys, we just, we're doing a lot of zigzag one-on-one. -on -one. What I teach is not zigzag, you know? And so it, we're playing full court one-on-one. -on -one. Right. And then I, just to get, you know, some, something out of, something different, a new kind of drill just to get started with practice. Yeah, yeah. I think those are all good. Um, so what I do is if you find a drill like that that you like, what I do is I just adjust the drill. So okay. you can make it where they got to put their hands behind their back. You can make it where they got to score within four dribbles. So what I like to do is get good at a skill and then add restrictions to that skill. Okay. Um, I, I love that. I mean, I, I, we do a lot of mismatch things early um, where we'll do um, – hold on, I'm going to change this to gallery so we can all see each other. Um, so uh, I, what I do is I do it as um, – I do it as kind of like, you know, we'll do a disadvantage, like two on three, three on four, four on five kind of thing early in the season. Um, mm -hmm. So we're, 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 I'm, I'm trying, cause we get pressured in our league. So I'm always looking at what we need to work in and then try to set rules for that. I think that's a, those are great. That's a great drill to start with. It's just what, you know, what specific skill are you looking for to get good at in that? I guess um, I, what I'm looking more for is, uh, well, I, I mean, that's going to the hoop scoring. It's just that's why we do one on one a lot. And then our defense, just getting them to turn and trying to get yep. the. So, so you want to make, you want to just have lingo that you can yell at them to do. <laughs> like, right. I'm, if you ever came to my practice, you'd hear butt to the buck, butt, butt to the bus, get basket. Um, you know, their, their butt should always be facing the basket. If they ever get turned where their butt isn't at facing the basket, something's wrong. So, you just want to like, you know, we're, and we're this week, the team we're playing, we're going to have to get down. We're starting to stand up on defense. So we're going to spend a lot of time on working on how we can get down, how we can get um, uh, in a good defensive stance because we tend to play very vertical. Um, so I think that's what you want to do is just figure a couple ways to um, work on that. I would do two on two. I, I love small sided games. I'm also – We've been working a lot on footwork recently, so. Um, yeah, I was debating just doing like a ping pong, like three on three to start. But I got, I have 10 guys and then just do a disadvantage. Like one guy has to touch the half court line. Yeah, something that, those are all great. Yep, those are start all great. Out. Yep, yep. And the thing is, it's like, it's like life. The variety is the spice of life. If you do right. the same drill over and over and over again. Well, that's kind of what I was thinking because we're like, we're in, we're starting to get, we have like a month and a half left and I've been trying, well, I really like the one-on-one, -on -one, but like, what yeah, can so I do? I, yeah. So I would change it up, go two and two, add new rules, do those kind of things. Okay. All right. All right. Who else? Angie, I know you had some questions. Hey there. Hi. My, my scenario is um, kind of complicated, but we did get a W on Friday night. Well, that's good. That's yeah. Good. That was the first one. Um, so my squad is nine girls. We are varsity, and we um, don't have a JV team because we don't have enough people, so okay. we have to play varsity. Yeah. Okay. So and we're they're a little seven. Over, they're a little overwhelmed. Yeah, seven freshmen, two sophomore. That's Ooh. it. Yeah, okay. and our 
our school is small. Like uh, I think there's 320 kids, not many high school kids. So we have um, little talent that tries out. <clears throat> right. And, um, they didn't win a game last year. Okay. And I was so frustrated just in watching. My son plays varsity, so okay. we're there at the girls' games, and I love the game and right. used to play and whatever, you know. Yeah. But our issue is usually that parents coach the teams. Right. And they've got a kid that plays on a team. Right. I get and it. So yeah. yeah. My, so, my, so how do you run practice with nine girls? Um, usually I jump in. I'm the 10th man. I have an okay. assistant. Um, okay. We do a lot of three-on-three -three drills, three-v-three. Three Yep. They get a lot of running in. Right, they do. Um, so the best thing about freshmen and sophomores is they become sophomores and juniors. They get older. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best thing. Um, no, I mean, I've talked to coaches that have had small teams like that, and I think that, that that's fine. Five on five is important. I would try to definitely do a lot of walkthrough stuff. Um, you know, I know when I coached the, the younger levels, and sometimes we wouldn't have enough guys to go five on five. We did a lot of walkthrough stuff, like out of bounds plays, where you can just do five on zero, just so they can get the, you know, and then you can also throw four defenders in there if you need to. Right. Um, well, um, the girls um, had not won a game last year or this year. We were one and seven, or zero and seven, seven. and so now we're one and eight. Okay. And we've got one or two more teams that will play. Uh, we only have four games left, I think. Okay. Um, that we, we might get a win. Okay. So, their attitudes are great. I've had one issue with one kid, but overall we were running. I feel like I had to teach them a lot of fundamental stuff, but we've got good press break. Uh, we pressed this last game. They loved it. I knew if I could get them to that point, they would catch on. Right. Um, that's an easy sell. If you're at, if you're good enough and can do it, that's an easy sell. <laughs> that's like having oh, yeah. dinner for dinner. If you can teach them to pressure. Um, I, only, I only have two that are really good enough to get the concept and do that well. Right. What uh? What skill set? I mean, with the, with with a young group like that, I'd spend a lot of time on ball handling and a lot of time on shooting too. Exactly. Uh, we. I just got a young guy that was um. David West runs a gym here um, okay. just east of Raleigh. Yep. Um. He owns it and his brother runs it. So there was a young guy named Trevor that's in there. He used to play college ball. So he, I had him come over as just like right, mid the the mid season blahs were in. So he right. came over and taught them a lot of dribbling, like hard dribbling, high dribble, low crossover, and they loved it. And it was like it sparked, sparked a fire. So Thursday we almost won, but it felt like a win because we scored 50 points. Right. And never in school history has our girls scored 50 points, 50 points. in a game. So. And then the next night we scored 51 and we won. We won like 51 to 7. On so what you can side. tell them too, this is, this is something I was just re I was recently <clears throat> reading about dribbling the ball. The part of it is you want it in your hand as much as possible. So you want to teach them to pound it. So there's, and I'm getting old. My sound isn't, my, I can't hear as well as I used to. But when you pound, when you just dribble a ball, and then when you pound a ball, there's a difference in the sound. So I actually have the kids say, well, listen to this, and I'll just dribble it. And then I dribble it really hard. You can, so that's something to, to show the girls that you really want to teach them to, they got to pound that ball like it's like, because the, the harder you pound it, the more it's in your hand. And that's a good thing. Um, I've, I've been listening to all your podcasts, trying to just cut down on turnovers, because literally we would have 50, 60 turnovers. Oh, my God. Yes, it was so the, horrible. So, so my, son, son, my son's a senior, and uh, I'm just looking at stats because we play next – we have a, a big rivalry game. I'm looking at stats last week, and you know, most of the guys are in the 12 to 14% turnover rate, and he's at, like, the 6%. I go, well – that's because oh, you nice. live in my. That's because you live in my house, and I'm not gonna let you. <laughs> you know. That's um, awesome. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have questions? We can help. We can answer each other's too. That's okay. Feel free to jump in. <clears throat> Ryan, or I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear me or not. I can hear you. I can. All right. I'm in the almost identical situation as Angie. Uh, our high school is 120 kids. Oh. I see 120 <laughs> kids by afternoon. Yeah, and uh, so I had it, I had another coach explain it to me. It's like uh, five card draw poker without a draw. You get what you get. You have to go. <laughs> you do. Yep. Um, but yeah, we. I was a s assistant last year. Okay. We won four games. The year before they won zero. Uh, last year we though we had uh, three seniors and some upperclassmen. So I'm starting uh, three sophomores and two freshmen right now. 
Oh my God. In varsity. Bless you too. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting like four, I'm starting like three or four seniors and a junior. There's a big difference. There is. Oh, there yeah. is. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, we're struggling. I wish people would play us man to man. We're small and quick. Can't handle it. Not great dribblers, but we can get by them. Right. Um, so what we're struggling with is it seems like our league is copycat and everyone is throwing a three, two or a one, two, two. And we, yep. do, once we get in half court, it's just, it's over. Cause you can't shoot. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> so long-term you got to get them shooting long-term like that. Yeah. Not, there's nothing we can do about that right now in the next six months. Um, it's a skill. It's a, it's definitely a skill you can get good at. If everyone can be a shooter, not everyone can be a scorer. You've probably heard me say that a billion times, but it's true. So that's long term. Long term, if I tell people we're building a program, you got to get shooters. Then you can move the pieces around. You know, here's my athlete that's a shooter. Here's my slow kid. There's, I can do things as long as I can shoot. So that's a long term. That's your answer. But short term for like dealing with what we're dealing with right now. Um, so do you? Are you able to score? Are you getting beats because your the other team outscores you defensively? Are you okay? Where? Um. Oh, well, last night we got beat uh, sixty-four to fourteen. Okay, that's so, our worst one though. So score, uh, but scoring is an issue. You're not getting yeah. in the fifties and sixties. Okay. No, no, no. We we All got right. we scored fifty-one game, but most of the time we're uh, high twenties maybe. Okay, and then what is the? Uh, I mean, are the opponents able to score on you easily? Um, it, not in the half court game. Okay. So, um, there's a couple, you have a couple of options. First of all, you have to figure out ways to get points. <laughs> right. Um, and we've, we're scoring a lot on out of bounds. Okay. So, I was, so that was the first thing I would say you should have out of bounds. Um, then, uh, you, any, any time, any way you can do that. So are you, are you athletic enough that you could trap? We've, we've done it. Um, we run a one, three, one trap. And last year we ran with success, almost like a, a two, three trap. Yeah. Both, see, both that's a, my trap. thought was, my thought was probably, especially cause you're, my thought wouldn't probably be like a three, two, two, three trap and trap in the corners. Mm -hmm. Cause what you're going to want from that trap is layups, right? Right. <laughs> um, you want turnovers. So, um, at this point, especially with a young team, like what was Angie was saying is you almost got to feed the monster a little bit. Like, well, you know, you lost by 40 anyway, like let's go. You don't say that to the girls, but you're the guys, but you basically say, we're just going to come, we're going to pick up in the, cause you got to figure ways to manufacture some easy, easy points. Right. And, and if you can't shoot from the outside, I'm just going to literally, if I'm playing and you can't shoot, I'm packing it in, go ahead and shoot. Then we get the rebound and then you're done. Um, so you need to come up with like maybe a run and jump, a full court man, something where they just, you know, you're trying to turn them over so you can get easy shots in the other direction. Um, I think that's the only way, you know, out of bounds plays, no one's playing man against you. I would say quick hitters or like plays, but those, you, you know, we can, you can set up an overload, you can screen the zone, but you're going to have to hit some outside shots at some point. Right. Um, are you sending everybody to the glass on those shots? Because uh, offensive rebounding is another way you can do it. Because I, a lot of zones aren't good at boxing out. Um, so you know, I would if, if it was my team, I would probably try to pick up in the full a little bit, and then I would also say I would you know say to these three or four players, say every time there's a shot, your job is to go get the offensive rebound. Um, because if they do, they're going to be close to the basket again, and those are easy points for you to get. Right. Um, but you got to sell it. It's like, I don't know, I was doing a podcast a week or so ago. Whatever you sell to them, they'll believe. <laughs> so you got you to gotta sell to them that offensive rebounds are a big deal. Um, and I've said this, I said this to my guys last night. It's like offensive rebounds are yours. Like I, I never yell at a kid that takes a shot after an offensive rebound. Like, I don't care. You just got, it's like, that's candy. And you know, that's like grand right. $20 you get at Christmas. That's the bonus, you know? Um, so I think that's what you got to do. How is their morale? Well, last night was pretty bad. Yeah. But I just, I told them to forget it. 
Yep. So yeah. So <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it's similar to the. By the way, when the game was over and there's still a whiteboard in the locker room, I said, "Who wants to erase this game?" And they all ran up and erase the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have finals this week at school, and I was talking to my students, and I said, "You know how you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? You don't sit down and eat an elephant in one sitting." Well, that's what you got to. That's what you got to sell to the girls too, because literally, it's this is a long term. Like, we just got to get better, a little bit better every day. It might not show up in the columns, but you know that we're all going to do this together. And in two or three years, here's where we're going to be. That you got to, it's it, part of it's marketing and selling at this point. Yeah. I, I mean, that was a long time ago, but I do remember it was a lot like every little victory is like you play quarters where you are at. Yeah. Right? We do. Yeah. Okay. So we, cause we play half. So what I used to do is I used to like, we used to break the game up. Did we win? How many quarters did we win? I didn't even care about the score. Like, look, you won the second quarter. All right, let's win the second and third. So we keep – you got to break it up. It's a stats teacher. You got to break it up into things that you can give them small victories. Um, yep. You know, we're down by – when, when you're down by 40, well, let's cut it to 30, kind of small victories. Trust me, those things will start building, and then it's like, as long as they're getting along and as long as they are still making eye contact with you <laughs> and you still got them, it's good. Um, Cause you can keep selling that stuff. It's, it's when you start losing them to that. And it's like, you, that's when you got problems. Um, I mean, right. what, what's your thoughts? Uh, I've been doing a lot of that. Uh, we had to work on, uh, just self-confidence stuff. I brought in a, a uh, visualization routine. I hear uh, you. There's something I said about in a podcast, and I started doing this with my boys. I learned this from a coach uh, outside of Atlanta. We meditate for a minute before we practice. And, and the reason we do that is I want them to leave school behind and meditate about practice. I said, this is the fun part. Like, running up and down and doing this is the good part. So I think that's great. I think that I think we underestimate that as coaches. Um, that small little piece is huge. I think. We we just brought it in. Um, so what I make them do is they have to leave the gym and wipe their feet to leave all the crap outside. Oh, I love and that. We come back in. We go straight in the locker room, and they've written positive self image statements, positive self talk, and then we do. It's about five minutes of uh, just breathing and then repeating those things over and over in their mind um i walk them through it with stages and then we go out and practice and we do it before games now too um, that's a great idea that's a great because you know why this is going to be this is going to be like eating better kind of thing it's not you don't see it in a month but you're going to see it in six to nine months that's the yep. it, it's the hard part it's like not quote unquote dieting <laughs> it doesn't everyone wants to lose you, you, yeah. trust me that that will pay off in the long haul um, and then, and then just the, talking to them too. Yeah. The other thing I did where I saw a big change in them was, um, we're in Montana okay. and about 45 minutes from university of Montana. And I contacted the coaches and I got into a practice, took them to a practice, not a game. Right. That seemed to really open their eyes on the difference. Oh, it's a whole different. Yeah. 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 Um, I would also going back to what we were saying, and this would be for Angie too. I would think about the types of shots you're getting against those zones. And those are the ones you should be practicing. Like, are you getting skips? Are you getting one pass and a shot? Are you getting attacking the rim? Um, and that those are the ones I would just pound in because you will be able to make some improvement in that. But um, I, I think sometimes we waste practice time on things that aren't are relevant. I would really – go back and watch some game tape and say, we're getting elbow shots. We're getting baseline shots. Like my team, this, this team is probably taking more three pointers this year. My team this year than ever in my coaching career, we shoot a lot of threes in practice um, because we have to, that's what, that's part of our, that's part of our superpower. Um, so I think that's what you really got. You got to go back and watch some game tape. Game tape. This is the kind of stuff that we need practice on. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. All right, who else? The Packers are on tonight, too, if anyone cares. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why this is a little bit earlier, because the Packers are on today. 
Go, Pat, I don't think go. they're going to win. Um, I was just thinking of one thing that I, when my girls were having so much trouble scoring, for us to score 50 was like epic. And they would hit two nights in a row. Right. But one thing right. that we, and I tried to implement last week was dribble drive. And when I played, dribble drive didn't exist or yep. wasn't a thing. So I've had to learn it and it's hard to teach, but um, just getting them that mentality of attack, attack the rim. It is. The it's really hard. Point. You got to break it down into like two on two. Um, those are the things you got to break it into little pieces. Um, it's hard. I mean, we're, we've been, we've run read and react in this year's group. We've put in like a kind of a tweak with dribble drive just because I got it. We shoot so many threes. So now people are running at us. So we got to go around them. Um, it's, it's not instinctual to want to, it's not instinctual for them to want to attack the rim. So you got to like, um, I would do a lot of like small game stuff. Um, you know, where you're maybe playing two on two and you tell them the only shots they can take are two feet from the basket. That will force them to dribble attack. Um, right. It is, it is, that is a, that is not instinctual unless a kid's played a lot of basketball. <laughs> no. And then there, then, then you put not good dribblers on top of that. So that didn't make it great either. <laughs> yeah, it's not. That's why <laughs> you, you know, unless they can dribble, then you might want to do like more screening and more of the read and react kind of motion yeah. offensive thing we tried it a little bit in the games and then they wanted to go back to our motion so we went back to our motion to try to get it but the mentality just trying to give them that mentality of attack the room it seemed to help them because they all were like okay let's go for it let's go for it right and i think the first night that on thursday night we shot the ball 144 times but our percent's really really low but right you know, we well it's ball. a law of large numbers the more you shoot it at it better chance it has to go in that's right. Yeah, it is. It's like Vegas. Vegas is built on the law of large numbers. Yeah, really and I've tried to show them how to um, draw a foul, so we end up on the foul right. Line. I mean, I was telling Mike we we got a big lot. Yes, last night we got big. We have like fifteen, and then the team made a run. I said they're making runs because all you're doing is shooting threes. The way you stop runs is to get to the free throw line by not shooting jumpers, by you know, by attacking the rim, by getting you know. That's how you stop runs. Um, right. and that's what you got to teach the girls. It's like, well, if we're not scoring, well, how can we easy points are that free throw line? Um, right. so that, you know, that's with yours too. If you're going into a drought, maybe, I mean, because part of it's human, the human, the referee has to call the foul. So it's some of that's like, you're, you well, if we're attacking, at least we got a shot to go to the free throw line. Um, yeah. you know, rather than getting it in, especially against zones, zones don't like those cuts. And they don't like people that attack. Um, you know, I've a couple been, rotations and attacks really help. I've been trying. I even got the football pads out and made them attack, do the layups with hitting them with football pads. Oh, that's perfect. We do that every day in practice. Every day. Mm -hmm. They got to get used to that contact. And then mm -hmm. the, what I harp on them is it's not only making it, <laughs> it's not only getting the shot off and trying to, you, we're trying to get three point plays. I said, you know, I, I'd say I go old school with them. I say, this is the way coach had to get three point plays <laughs> when I played. You know? Yeah, it, um, they, it's hard to get them to initiate the contact. They want to jump away from it and they want to avoid it. Yes, yes, yes. And, that, and those pads are, you can buy those at Dick's and stuff too. Those, you know, I just steal them from our football coach, but those are perfect because. What do you do with the pads? You just, so let's say, so let's say a person. So I, I know how you wear them or whatever, but like. No, you they don't even wear them. You just hold them. And I literally, yeah. I do literally, so as they're going up for a layup or they're going into the rim, I'm literally following them. I'm not following them. Like right. That. But if you're, are you like doing, you're not doing like layup lines and like, okay, come on up and. No, like we'll do, we'll put a ball in a chair. We'll do a lot of different things, but I'll have them. Like just an start advantage. The elbow. Yeah. I'll just have them start in the elbow and have a line passing into the baseline, into the block. And they'll do their move, and I'll just be moving them with that block. The next thing is I'll have them put it on the ball, uh, ball in a chair, like maybe from 15 feet on the wing, and they'll grab it. We'll do different things like crossovers and stuff. But the premise is one dribble rim, and then they got to attack. Um, so I'll even do the mi old mic and drill with a pad, mm -hmm. and as they're doing their mic in, I'll be hitting them just so they get you. It's it's about the contact. Um, right. Like the team, the team we play this week, this Friday, it's literally going to be a football game. It's going to, I mean, we, we know each other. We play the same style. It's going to be physical. So the, we'll just be, I just wanted to get used to that contact. Um, it was like what, what Ryan was saying. It's like, 
you know, it just – it's perfect. It, 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 it will help them finish because the contact in the game is, is less – it's the premise of practice. You want practice to be harder than, than a game. When you're hit with this pad, it bumps you off more off center than you will in a game. If you get bumped off that far off center, the official will tend to blow the whistle. Um, so that's the good part about it. All right. Question, other questions? Can you hear me, Coach? I can. Hey, this is Jordan, Tennessee. How are you? Oh, how are you? You didn't have your Doing name? Good. Jordan, so I didn't know who it was. Oh, I did it from my phone. I wasn't sure how to get it. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, but, uh, okay, so since uh, since we last spoke, yep. uh, we hit the Christmas tournament. And since then, we've been fried, to put it nicely. I had in my top seven rotation, I had a girl sit out for over a week thinking that she tore her meniscus. Uh, okay. A fractured ankle, a fractured foot, a broken finger on your shooting hand. I've had three girls get the flu, two with strep, and one with bronchitis. Um, so wow, you're not you're not living a lucky life right now. Holy <laughs> no! <laughs> um, all I, all the physical injuries was in our top rotation. Um, a few of the sicknesses were from some younger girls, uh, but our numbers were down a lot in practice and. Uh, so we had we we lost some games that we probably shouldn't have in the big scheme of things. Right. Um, but we kept our head above water enough to finish first in our area for the tournament, which means so my we we got most of these girls coming back now. Most of my girls are are getting healthy. Okay. Um, it wasn't a torn meniscus, uh, oh, thankfully, uh, and the other ones. Uh, I only have one more in the boot, and she gets it off tomorrow. So. Um, so more or less, uh, my question is now, since we did get the one seed, uh, we have a ton of practice time. Like we have all week, like we have Monday through Friday of this upcoming week. And then you uh, play a team, play. you play a team that you should probably beat in the first round. We play a team that they have to play in to play us. Uh, the first, the two teams, uh, one of them, we beat 39 to nine. The other one will beat 37 to seven. So. Okay. Like, it's going to be a pretty weak team. And we should – like, our closest area game this year was a 14-point win. Okay. Uh, but once we get – once we get – if we can take care of business like we should and get to sectionals, um, we're going to have some really good teams. Uh, that right. We'll be so, how, how far – so, so here's what here's what you got to do a couple things. Because I've been in this – I've been in this boat before. So, how – not that bad. This is the worst I've ever heard, to be honest with you. But <laughs> bad, but not yeah. this bad. Um, how long – do you have after so you play sat this weekend, then you have another week before you play again? No, so we will play Saturday. Okay. And based off Saturday, we will probably play again um, next Tuesday if we win. Okay. Uh, um, so we'll go from like the 25th to the 28th, and then Thursday will be the championship of our area. Okay. And then a week from Saturday, so February 1st, we'll start, like, which is essentially our state sectional tournament. Okay, and that's, um, when, the, that's when the real – That's yeah. when real competition gets, and you, you really – you okay. got to bring your A game. So, so here's a couple concerns. Girls are going to be – they're going to be out of shape. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> – and they're going to be a little <laughs> out of routine. So um, part of this week has to – you have to get them in shape. Um, it, it, but not beat them up kind of there, there is a fine line this week as far as getting them in shape luckily you got a game where you can experiment and rest and kind of let them get their legs under them um so as they come back you definitely i mean have they been shoot have they been in the gym have they been shooting at all they've been doing any of that stuff um so we've i mean we've continued to have games our last game was uh last thursday okay um and then we had like an optional practice um, yesterday, uh, just open up the gym for them to be able to get shots up. And then we had a practice after school on Friday. Um, the girls that have been hurt, uh, one of them's been able to like consistently shoot free throws and everything like that. The other two that's been in boots has been for the most part like just doing like some stationary ball handling things or sitting in a chair and doing some ball handling yeah, things. They can't do much. Um, okay. Yeah. Um. So. So the, so the boot thing is. Um, 
you, you should talk to your trainer about this because I'm not a trainer or a doctor. But part of this is even getting them on a bike, something where they're not putting the pressure on the foot, if it's, especially if that's the issue. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think, I, think, I, think, I think first is slow, coming up with a plan to slowly try to get them in shape in the next two weeks. <laughs> right. So almost like the beginning of the season where you want to, you don't want to, you know, do all your running day one and then they're just sore for four days because you don't have that time. Um, right. So you, I would try to map out the next two weeks as far as conditioning goes. And early in the conditioning, I would try to get a lot of shots up. So as soon as they can go, literally I would shot, 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 shot. Cause that's the thing. It's like, it's like swinging a baseball bat. It's like swinging a golf club. It's like, if you haven't done it in a while, you lose it pretty fast. Um, it's not like riding a bike. So you just, they, they're going to need some, they're going to need some early season reps as far as shots. Go. Right. Those are the two things that you'll notice the most when they come back plays yeah. and, and playing with their teammates and stuff two weeks that's plenty of time for two weeks with that um they'll, yeah. hit the, they'll hit the ground running on that it's conditioning and shots um you have to figure out how you can get them everything they need over the next two weeks um if it, it, yeah i mean that's big and yeah trying so to keep the we, train, you're not gonna put anything new in i'm guessing uh no if we no. if we i mean we'll do some situation things this week and yeah, things that's like that perfect. And so, yeah it might be like one play in the half court i mean and that would be and we're we're a transition team anyway so yeah. that's just something that'd be something to have in our back pocket it's the time of year to do situation stuff like i'm starting to map out my week because we have this big game on friday and we'll spend so we got eight hours of practice we'll spend 40 minutes probably of those eight hours on situations like right. down two, what are we going to do? Up four, what are we going to do? Because I know these next two or three games are going to be close and we got to be ready. Um, and it's also a mental thing. I'm trying to play men mind games with them a little bit. Um, like right. It's going to be a close game and we're going to be ready. And then when I say run Izzo or I say run victory, I will say run win or whatever that, okay, we've run that in practice. It's like I can just look them in the eyes and it's like, you got this kind of thing. So yeah, situation right. and that and that situation thing won't be a pounding thing for them. You don't want to you right. want to stay away from the we're going to go up and down the court da 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 da, da until at least right. later in this week, like Thursday, Friday, if you're playing Saturday, and then let them play on Saturday, recoup day, then come back Monday, prep, play Tuesday, so they can get some of that running stuff. It sounds like you got opponents that it's okay. Some of that running yeah. stuff can be in the games. <laughs> Um, it doesn't have, you don't want to pound them where they get that fracture get actually becomes a fracture kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. So one, one of the girls that was in a boot but has been able to come back um, and she got cleared quite honestly a whole lot earlier than what I thought she okay. would. And it kind of showed. Uh, so she's been cleared for like a week and a half now. And really she was able to participate in a game for the first time last Thursday and, and be somewhat her old self before the right. injury. Right. Uh, because she kind of got cleared early. Um, but so um, we talked a lot where we are, we're a heavy transition team. Um, so we press, uh, we pressure a lot, everything like that. I have mostly athletes. Right. Um, not really crazy on skills, but we have athletes not big or anything like that. Um, when we, when we had four of our top seven missing for one game, uh, for two games, rather, excuse me, um, we did no longer kind of had the depth to play that pressure ball. Right. Like, we, it, we, we kind of ran out a little bit of that. You ran um, out – first of all, you ran out of gas is my guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we did. And so, uh, a balance that I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about is I want to make sure – uh, that we're we're reassuring them of because our depth is kind of our superpower. Right, and that will so, will we'll, we'll you have most of the depth back? Yeah, so hopefully, like it will be her first day back, but we will have everyone there and able to participate as of tomorrow for the first okay. time. So, so the, I, I mean, I think you're just <laughs> I, I just think you're honest with them. And you say, hey, life. This is this is the best life lesson that you can learn about life. You don't know what's going to happen. Bad things happen. It's how you respond to these bad things. So we, we are still this team. 
Have we, have we faced some adversity? Absolutely. But it's going to make us stronger in the next three weeks. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to do this to get us in shape. We're going to work on some rotations. We're going to do this. We're going to get some shots up. We will be fine. Blah, 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 blah. Again, salesman marketing kind of thing. And then, then it's your job to get them. I mean, you can't change probably your game plan at this point and decide we're going to slow the ball up. So you got to go with your superpower at this point. Yeah. Um, and just try to, and, and luckily you got a decent C. Like if you had a win, this first yeah. game was a brutal game. It'd be different. So I think that's, that's what you kind of sell them too. It's like, we got this, you know, everyone's going to get the rust out on Friday or Saturday. And then, you know, we're going to just come back and hit the ground running. Da, da, da. Yeah. I think you're fine. As long as you get those yeah. shots and conditioning up, I think you'll be fine. We're, yeah. We're well, in, in those games, we kind of had to get out of the pressing mode a little bit just to sustain a little right. while. So I think that's where you restart introducing that into them. Yeah. 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 And that and that's one thing that I want to be able to do this week without the overwork side. Of, right. You know, almost situations with the press to make sure we're we're executing correctly and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the perfect thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Who else? I had a quick question. Yes. Uh, well, maybe not quick, but uh, <laughs> we're a pretty big school. Uh, we don't, we have a lot of kids who play football. Okay. Uh, and, I mean, we're a big school, but we're probably one of the smaller schools in our big school. We got like 2,000 students, but total in our whole high school. Okay. And uh, we don't have a lot of kids who come to the off-season workout. Like my 10th grade team, I probably met two or three of them this this summer and I came all the time. Right. And uh, our varsity guys, we get more of those guys that come out, but not, I mean, a lot of them play football. So that's, kind of, I mean, we, I, I hate to say it, but we live in a society where if they don't think they're going to play and they don't think they're going to be the, the guy or the gal, they don't tend to do it. They so go, then they go find, right, and I get that. But, but the thing is, uh, I mean, all of my guys, they were like on the ninth grade team. Right. Well, how and many then, of them will like, be on the like varsity team? Pardon? How many of them will make it next year? Uh, to the varsity JV season? Yeah. Uh, I would say at least five or six. Okay. At least. And are those five or six committed? Pardon? Uh, I would say probably of the five or six, two are committed. Two of them decided to show up at tryouts two weeks before tryouts and start working on their game. They're like, eh, they weren't sure if they're going to play or not. Right. And then, and now they're my starters and they play a lot. Right. So sometimes it's a maturity thing too. Um, mm -hmm. The thing is they got to see, they have to see a payoff for that stuff um, or a culture where it's accept. I mean, like when we do our summer workouts, it, I mean, I, and this should come from the head coach a little bit too. It's like, my expectation is if you want to play, you're going to like come right. like, and I, and I understand there's family vacations and I understand people have to go mm -hmm. and, you know, like my son went to Badger Boy State and missed it for a week, yeah. whatever. I get all that stuff. That's fine. But if you're in town, you should be here. Um, so it's right. part of that. Building like, what is culture. The, pardon? Part of that's building culture. Right. Yeah. What do you you do in your like summer like the open gym stuff like do you have are your captains like well you right? can't have i can have contact in the summer. right i know we're just watching but do they just come and play no, pick we get, we, no they don't do any pickup i don't let them play at all zero mm -hmm. there's no playing at all they can go mm -hmm. play at the park or at the you know the uw well, they can, there's plenty of places they can go play so we do all skill work and we okay. do station work. Like, we'll be working on threes. We'll work on post moves. We'll be working on ball handling. We'll be working on two-on-two -on -two moves and reads off of screens. We'll have basically station. And we'll change them. We usually, we usually stay with a, sta a set of stations for a week. So can you, like, tell them what to do every week? Or what do you? Yeah, I just I, I hand it out to them. And, I, and, again, I'm doing it. And my assistants are there. We're doing it. But okay. when we did it, when we weren't able to have contact, and I handed it to my captain and said, here's what okay. you should do. Like, this is what you should do. And then mm -hmm. their reward is if they do all of that, then I will let them sometimes play at the end if, we, if we're ahead of schedule. Okay. Um, but that's a time where you can become a shooter, too. Mm -hmm. Like, the summer is when you can become a shooter. Like, you put, yeah. up, the, you put up the shots, you can become a shooter. Um, so that's what I'm selling to them. It's like, 
I'm doing this for you. This isn't, I mean, I can, I'd rather go fishing. Like I'm here for you to help you become a better player. Um, it's the whole rationale of like, I just had to yell at my guys about wearing ankle braces about a week ago. Well, mm-hmm. I said, I'm not punishing you to do this. I'm doing it because I want you to play. Like mm-hmm. if you don't wear ankle braces, you don't get to practice, but I'm not doing it. I'm not telling you you have to wear green shoes. I'm telling you, you have to wear something that's going to help you not be hurt. So that's the right. Ra- that's the rationale I have with it. But yeah, I think, like- I think you should have that spell on. If they come literally, if they come and just play up and down five on five or three, it's useless. It's useless. It's like playing summer AAU. It's fine. Go do it. But it's not going to make you a better player, my opinion. Okay. Well, last year was my first year, and that's pretty much all they did is they played five on five. Yeah, and that's and our fine. Girls I mean, team, our girls team is good. They're, they're like top five in state, and they that's all they do. But they do a little like three on two, and they get a lot of girls show up. But, you right. know, they play five on – or they do like five on five on five. Yeah. Yeah, I just think I just think that's a. I mean, it's like you don't have to convince them to play. You got to convince them to work on their, you know, their skills. Right. <laughs> do you have like what, like the model of what you do on the summer? I do. I do. If you email email me and I will send it to you. I will. Sure, I can do that. Yep. Let me write myself a note. I'll send you an email. You send me an email and I'll find that for you. Yep, I will send that off to you. I'll send off the general outline and then um i'll have to find the pdfs i don't know what the pdfs are okay so probably in some drop all right thank you yeah, you're, i'm you're gonna welcome. get going but thank you right. yeah no problem hey we'll do one we i'm going i'm getting to the point where every other week so next week just watch facebook will be one-on-one calls and then every other week i kind of go back and forth um, okay. okay i just just with my schedule sometimes we no, played a game I'm, one day done got done and now. Uh, that's perfect. Yep. And I try to pick different times just for people. I'm going to try to do some during the week too, maybe at night. Maybe that okay. works better for people. All right. See ya. All right. Thanks. Yep. Thanks no so. problem. All right. Other questions? Coach Collins, I just have one more. Yep. No problem. Um, by trade, I'm an emergency room nurse. Okay. And, God, bl- God bless um, you. Good for you. Yeah. So I, in my spare time, I'm doing this um, varsity girls gig, right? Um. How do I get to be a better coach in that I've got to read the other team and see, I, I'm so focused on, I've got to fix my girls yep. that and we, so, we're always behind. I'm not good at coaching, like the coaching. Part. No, That's no, coaching. I get that. So two things. First of all, I almost went to the ER like two days ago when I banged my head on uh, my, one of the lockers in our room, like blood coming all over. It was okay. I didn't cope, but probably should have, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> didn't want to go to the ER because I don't love the ER. I was there with my wife for her. Uh, she had her appendix out about a month ago. I was not, I don't want to go back to the ER. Oh, it's expensive too. It's expensive too. Um, so, uh, so you are doing the right thing first. Okay. Worry about your team first. Once okay. you get good at doing that, then we can move you to the next level where you're watching for adjustments and that. All you should be worried about is your girls at this point. Don't worry about the other team. Worry about what they're doing. What they're doing well and what they're not doing well and then what happens is you'll slow the game slows down for you once you've done it a little bit longer where it's a it's a it's not like being a baseball coach or softball coach where you have all this time in between so right. um so what's good about this is you know just pick a piece and you're doing the right piece pick your girls what they need work on and just adjust them because they're the ones that need attention. And then as they get older and they get more accomplished on that end, then you're going to be able to um, go back and forth. I actually, I don't even know if I have, ooh, I do. I have a little black notebook I carry around with me too, to just, it's like this, you can buy them on Amazon for like six bucks, four bucks. And, and I keep it and I just write little notes in it during the game of things that mm-hmm. I think that, you know, ooh. So I, things I can talk about at halftime thing. It's just really quick. Um, sometimes oh. I yell it to my assistants, but um, it's just things that are I'm seeing, but it's so fast that if you don't, I mean, I'll forget them if I don't write them down. Um, so that's one little tidbit, but I think you're doing the right thing. Worry about your girls and what they're doing at this point, and then the rest of the stuff will take care of itself. It really will. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I helped with middle school last year, so the girls that moved up the ninth grade, those are the ones that I were attached to that made me like, let's make them better next year. And Yeah. Because and then in, in, the, in the next couple of years, you'll see such growth. It will be crazy. It really will be. Yeah. It really well, that's will be. exciting. 
I just felt the pressure come back on me when they start looking at me like, what are we going to do now? I know, I know, I know. And then just say, hey, we're doing this together. We'll figure this out. We got this. Right. Okay. Okay. That's good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, coach. So glad you enjoyed the video. Let me know how we can help. Join teachhoops.com up above. Um, I've been through it all. I've won championships, won a bunch of rings. Let me know how I can help you become a better basketball coach. Click teachhoops.com and check it out.